we, we are seeing a rebound in the market. Uh, I was mm -hmm. looking at the FTSE MIB. Uh, it was uh, more than 150% uh, uh, higher. Um, I would like to know if this rebound uh, has a, a solid basis. Well, if I, if I look at what um, the, the MIB has done over the past um, nine months or so, we retested the lows from last December. So we have found some support around about 17,600. We are getting a little bit of a rebound at the moment. Um, do I think it's sustainable? Only really if we get back above 20,000. I still think that there are significant problems within not only the Italian economy, but also the European economy. So yes, while I think we could get a rebound, I think it's likely to be limited around about the 20,000 level. Um, until such times as we get clear evidence, I think, of um, the next steps the European Central Bank may well take in terms of monetary policy. And uh, as we are awaiting the results of the stress test, uh, which effects uh, these uh, results could have on the markets, not only the Italian one, and the European markets generally? I really think it depends on the results of the stress tests and how much capital um, Italian banks have to raise um, you know, in the aftermath of the tests. Now, we're not going to know that until after the 26th of October. So I think it's very, very difficult to sort of really assess um, the outcome until we know the results of, of first and foremost, those, those stress tests. But also, um, soon after that, we, we do have a ECB rate meeting in the, at the beginning of November. And I think there's a good chance that maybe the European Central Bank may look at um, uh, announcing further measures to help stimulate um, the European economy. So, yeah, absolutely, the asset quality review will have an effect. But I think the, the key question is, um, what, result, you know, what will the results be for the Italian banking sector? Okay. Uh, this morning, uh, this night, uh, the um, uh, gross uh, domestic product uh, of China has come out mm. uh, uh, better than forecasted, but lower than uh, the last uh, the last uh, time. It was 7.3%. Mm. Do you think this is a good sin signal for the global economy, or China is still? Uh... I think that obviously that it's it's a bit of a mixed picture. You know, pe people are basically saying that the fact that um, the numbers came in at 7.3% above the 7.2%, which was expected, is a good thing. I don't agree. Um, yes, we did see a significant rebound in industrial production, but that was from a fairly low base. August was 69 We got a rebound to 8%. You know, that, that's fairly positive. But actually, when you look at retail sales, retail sales have continued to undershoot expectations. They came in at 11.6%. Now, a few years ago, um, the Chinese authorities said they wanted to rebalance their economy away from an industrialized base to domestic consumption. Those figures tell me they're still a long, long way from actually doing that. And I think going forward, I think if the markets are looking for the Chinese economy to help boost global growth, I think they're going to have to um, weigh back their expectations because I, I think that China will continue to slow down um, over the course of the next two to three years. Generally speaking, your view uh, compared with uh, last week one uh, is uh, uh, more pessimistic, uh, more optimistic, or is uh, the same? It's about the same. I think what we're going to see at the moment is probably some more range trading in equity markets over the course of the next few weeks. I think the DAX, German DAX, um, has got significant resistance at the 9,000 area. I think while it stays below that, the, the likelihood is we're going to continue to see very, very choppy trading. And um, I think the same applies to the FTSE MIB. I think um, the top side should be limited to around about 20,000. And the downside is key support of 17,600. Good. Thank you, Mr. Yuzon. So, uh, to the next time. Okay. Thank you, Alessandro.